Hey everybody, it's Carol with Refunction Crafts and I'm going to bring you a little video tutorial today. I'm going to alter this little um, porcelain box. It's just a plain little box with a mirror on the inside. And it was made, the top piece is uh, polymer clay and it was various colors of clay that made up the embellishment that was already on here and I wasn't super crazy about the colors and I've had this actually for probably 15 years sitting in a cabinet in a closet that I and I haven't been using it and I thought you know I really really like this little container it's a little ring box and I thought you know what I could really do something and make this really pretty so I'm going to embellish it today. So I thought I would do that along with you guys. Um, first, I just want to remind you guys that um, in my Etsy store and on my YouTube channel, I am going to be uh, doing a raffle for everyone that spends $50 or more in my Etsy shop. Um, I am going to raffle this pen off. This is a pen that my husband made he makes these on his lathe. He hand turns them himself. And this is what they call a bolt action one. Great gift for the guys. The guys just go gaga over these things. And what it has, it has a little, like a little rifle here at the top, which is the pocket holder. And then it has this little thing here at the top, which is what they call the bolt action. It goes it goes down and over and then the, the pen point comes out and then it just closes like that. This little pen is so heavy and the parts that he uses in his pens, he buys the top quality uh, parts and pieces when he makes these um, because we want them to write nicely and we want them to feel you know beefy in a guy's hand when they're writing with it and you can see the tip looks like a little bullet. Anyway, the guys go crazy over these things, and we, a couple of years ago, um, Jeff had made them for Christmas, and uh, we sold a ton of these pens. We did these and the uh, um, We the People and Second Amendment pens, stuff like that, a bunch of different ones. Anyway, um, we did really well with them, and we just decided we sell these for $60 in our shop, and we decided that um, we would do a giveaway for the month of August and I will be announcing the winner on my Etsy channel uh, the first week of September so I just want to give everybody the opportunity if you get on over to my Etsy store and hopefully you'll find um, some things that maybe you want to buy for Christmas presents I know people are starting to get ready for Christmas already um, this will be the raffle prize and you know everybody's going to have a decent chance um, because I'm certain I'm not going to get you know a ton of people that are just going to run right over and spend fifty dollars but if you if you want to do that you want to check out my store maybe you can find some things that you like um, in my shop and be entered into the raffle for this pen it's an awesome pen super high quality and I'm sure you all have a guy in your life that would love to receive this as a gift for Christmas so um, anyway, so I just wanted to mention that to you guys, let you know, or kind of give you a reminder that I'm going to be doing that. I'm keeping this one put aside specifically for the raffle. This is the exact pen that you're going to get um, if you win. And um, also, I want to say a special thank you to my friend Rhonda. Um, Rhonda has been a really, she's become a good friend of mine. Um, very very kind lady and Rhonda made recently made a very nice donation to my channel and I just want to say thanks so much Rhonda I greatly appreciate it and you know it, it enables me to go out and buy more craft supplies that maybe I don't have that I need or tools or things like that and so I appreciate that Rhonda thank you thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart I greatly appreciate it and um, I just, I mean, I can't say enough how much I appreciate everyone who has been so thoughtful and kind and donated supplies and 
and things like that just to keep me going. And lately I've been able to really put together some nice projects because of the kindness of others. So anyway, thank you, Rhonda. I appreciate it so much. And um, I just can't say enough good things about you. You've been a very, very kind person and we've kind of chatted back and forth and um, just, I just really, really, really appreciate it. And you guys are going to notice, um, moving on, you guys are going to notice I put a dark background here. I had a suggestion from one of my subscribers that my background was too light. And you know, I had actually thought about that because I was watching one of my videos one day and I thought, gosh, everything just seems to kind of melt into the background. And I'm having to put, you know, my hands behind them for people to see them. And she suggested that I put a darker background. Uh, down when I'm working on my projects so that you guys can see them better. Wow, what a difference. So I took this, this is just a piece of vinyl that I got from the Dollar Tree, the vinyl that they sell for um, for the Cricut machines and stuff, and I took it out of the box and I laid it down, and this is a dark navy blue, and oh my gosh, look at the difference. You guys can see everything that I've got out here on my on my table and it just it looks neater and cleaner and crisper and I just am super excited so thank you so much for that um, suggestion I took it to heart and I'm so glad I did um, so anyway I, I can't remember the name of the gal that actually made that suggestion so if it's you please send me a reminder so that I can make sure I'm, I give you an honorable mention in my next video. Um, I won't use last names, I just use first names. Unless you say I can use your last name, then I will. Um, but outside of that, I just like to make sure that I acknowledge everyone that kind of helps me out and does, um, does and suggests things that, that really make a difference. So thank you so much. I took your idea and I went with it. And um, just to, real quick to show you, I saw uh, Debbie Cottrell over at Kiki Sale oops, um, had uh, made some flowers and she posted pictures of them on her uh, Facebook page in Kiki Sale. And I loved the flowers. I thought, oh, those are so pretty. Well, along with that, she also posted a video that teaches you how to make them. And these are the flowers. This is the first one that I made. And I made this out of a silk, just a plain white silk um, fabric or satin fabric, I should say. And look at how pretty that came out. And then I did this one with just a regular, like a little floral um, fabric. And look at how cute these came out, you guys. I love, love, love these flowers. They were really easy to make, so I'm going to be doing a video on how to make these flowers for sure. Um, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to try and get the stuff together today, actually, and if I can make that video today, I won't post it today, but if I can make it today, I'm going to do that. Um, however, with the way my videos go, it may be posted before you even see this video, so <laughs> I just, I'm all over the place. Anyway, um, one of the other things that I got, and I think I may have shown you guys these little, um, they're actually for uh, earbuds, and they sell them over at the Dollar Tree. You see they've got a little pouch on the inside, and it's just a little um, round zipper container. Well, I have been passing these up in the Dollar Tree for months now. And one day I was walking by them and I thought, why are you passing those up? Those give you the perfect opportunity to make something really cool. Didn't know what I was going to do with them, but they had this color and they had this color and I think they had some other ones too. But I picked up two of these and two of these and I thought, okay, I'm going to do something with these. So I started um, with first painting the top and bottom white on this one. And then I decoupaged it with a really pretty napkin. Well, then I took it a step further and I actually painted on that napkin. I added some white in on, you know, the flowers and things just to crisp it up a little bit because it seemed like it was really kind of looking dingy. 
Um, so I added the white in there and I really think it, it really improved the look of the decoupage work and so I'm going to be embellishing this so I'm going to I'm I am definitely going to be working on that video today after I get done with this one and uh, so there's two more videos that I'm going to have coming up um, that I'm going to be doing I'm also going to do a video on some of these uh, let's see what did I do with them these ornaments and these are just little wooden ornaments that my husband makes on his CNC machine they're just plain wood and I don't I'm sorry I don't have a plain wooden one here to show you but I took these and I started decoupaging them and um, all different different napkins <clears throat> this one and this one and then I uh, used some distressed inks on the edges of them and then I'm going to be doing a video where I'm going to embellish some of these so I'm looking forward to doing that and then I took a Christmas tree shape and I took a cereal box and cut out the Christmas tree shape and I glued two pieces together and then painted it white and then decoupaged it with um, with these two different napkins and so I'm going to be doing that one as well. I just thought these were really fun and pretty and you know I'm looking for Christmas um, Christmas projects. These are just some of the things I'm going to be using to uh, to decorate those with. I had put the ornaments aside because I was waiting for that distress ink to dry before I put them in with all the embellishments. And I'm sorry if my hands look a little stained and dirty. They're really not. They've been washed. They just have inks and stuff all over them. So I did my best to try and get that off. But anyway, so let's go ahead and start embellishing this box. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some rhinestone chain, which is, this is just a, it's like a purplish pink um, two millimeter rhinestone chain really pretty let me see I'm too close and I'm gonna I'm gonna put that around the top piece here now this is not going to be the easiest thing because I even had a hard time trying to measure it around because it just kept sliding everywhere so I'm just going to take some of my e6000 I'm going to go around the entire edge of this lid and I'm going to add that rhinestone chain and I am using a relatively small one usually on something like this I would probably use a four millimeter but I just I like the color of this chain in fact I think for this portion of the video I am going to add a napkin down here so I don't get e6000 all over everything um, so I'm just going to take this with the rhinestones pointing up. So I want them to, when I'm looking at the top of this, I want to be looking at the rhinestones, not the side of the chain. So I'm going to just start working with this. Let's see. Okay. I think I'm going to kind of start like right here. And I'm going to work my way down around each side because that way I've got a little bit hanging over each side and it might stay on there a little bit better while I'm trying to get it on there. So we're just going to go around the entire lid sideways so that those rhinestones are pointing up. Again we want to make sure our rhinestones are always pointing up because that's aesthetically that's going to give you the nicest look it's something that I've always done and it's like my little pet peeve and if I forget to do it I get mad at myself because then I don't like the way it looks and I end up pulling off the rhinestone chain and then I feel like I kind of waste it because that chain once you've got glue on it it doesn't it doesn't it's not easy to work with after that to try and reuse it and I did cut this piece just slightly long because I couldn't get it to stay in place to get it the right size so I just cut it a little bit long I knew um, so that I knew I had enough 
and went with it that way. So, get these two pieces, these end pieces together. Oh, I think I left it. Hold on. I think I left it one too long, so I'm going to cut this one end piece off. There we go, perfect. So now I'm just gonna go around the entire thing and straighten it up. And I wanna put it as close to the top edge as I can because I think that's how you get the best look. So I'm just gonna kinda push it up. I'm gonna get a uh, toothpick here because using a toothpick is a good way to even your pieces out and get them kind of more straight and uniform. So I'm just gonna take that toothpick and just kinda run along it just like this as I'm pushing that chain up and then I'm also, I can kinda scrape out any uh, glue that is oozing out and I did get a little bit coming out of there because I did kind of put a lot of glue on there. I wanted to make sure it was going to have something to stick to. And sometimes with E6000 it really does start to cure fairly quickly. So if you're, as you're putting it around the edge of your project, it will start to dry right away. And then you can't move things around as easily. And um, this way, it doesn't dry quite as quickly if you have a nice big dollop of it. Usually I like to try and use as little as possible. But there are times when I will use more just for the simple fact that I know a certain piece is going to take a little longer to get around the entire thing. Although I'm taking longer, I think, just by having to get the glue out of there. But that's okay. We're going to be good. And I'm just kind of scraping the glue off the toothpick as I go. And I can, I can already feel it. It's a little bit harder to move now. So that's how quick this glue starts to cure, which is a good thing for me because that way I know that once I get this all done and I go around the whole thing, I can continue working on my project because um, it's not likely that these rhinestones are going to go anywhere. And if they move just ever so slightly, I can always fix that. And again, make sure you're watching so that your rhinestones don't flip because they do tend to want to lay back down flat on this edge. So you have to go around and make sure you're, you're placing, you're turning it so that it doesn't try to, doesn't flip flat on its bottom. So I hope everybody's having a glorious day today. I'm actually having a very good day today. And I was looking so forward to getting up this morning and starting my crafting. I didn't get started quite as early as I wanted to, but that's okay. I'm here now and working, working, working. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but here lately I've gotten so many wonderful happy mail um, packages and I've gotten so much great stuff to use in my videos and now I'm finding that <laughs> I'm having a hard time deciding which, which thing to do next. One of the big things that I really, really, really need to get done 
is my I want to do my spool doll so um, I think today after I get this other video done one of the first things I'm gonna do is try and gather up the things that I want to use in that project and get it ready I'd like to, I wish I had enough stuff so that I could make one first because usually that's what I do when I do videos if it's something like that that I've never done before I will usually make one off camera before I do the one on camera so that I don't end up uh, making a whole bunch of mistakes in the middle of my video now I'm not opposed to making mistakes in my videos, you guys, because I feel like when I do make a mistake, not only does it teach me, but it teaches you guys what not to do um, when you're making something. So in that respect, I just kind of don't have a problem with mistakes happening and being able to show you guys how you can fix those mistakes. You know, if they're made, there hasn't been a single thing that I have done, I don't think, well, I won't say that. That would be not, not the truth. Um, there have been very, very few times where I messed something up and I couldn't fix it and still use, you know, salvage the project. So there's almost always a way that you can fix the kinds of crafts that I do. Because especially if it's something that maybe it's you had to take it off and it was hot glued, something that was hot glued onto the project, um, we all know we can we can peel that hot glue off of just about anything um, if you work hard enough at it. And sometimes it comes off very easily. You can see I'm pulling some of the hot glue, the excess hot glue, or E6000 off of here fairly easily but when this E6000 dries and that chain is is on there it's not going anywhere because this stuff is is made to be one of those super strong adhesives and so much much better than hot glue as far as resisting coming apart later on down the road so I love it. I just use it all the time. And now I'm going to move on to my next thing. Um, I am noticing more and more lately that whenever I use triple thick, and you know what, I use it a lot of times when I'm putting diamond dust or my glass glitter on my projects, I use a lot of triple thick. And I am noticing it doesn't matter what I do if it has a white background it's ruined um, by the triple thick and what I mean by that is that stuff turns so yellow and I had a couple of things recently I was I was just beside myself I had a project that I had done a little while back and I had it in my Etsy shop and it sold and I went to go get it out so that I could ship it and I realized that the entire top of the piece and this was a couple of pieces that were purchased and they were both done pretty much the same way realized that both of them had turned so horribly yellow that there was no way there was absolutely no way I was going to send these items to my customer I, I was I was horrified when I saw them and I will not I will tell give a person their money back before I will send them something that I feel is not acceptable and this was not acceptable in any way shape or form so I sat and I thought about it and I thought okay Carol is there any way that you can salvage this project this these pieces 
because if you can't, you need to get a hold of your customer and you need to tell her, I'm sorry, but I don't have this piece available and, you know, figure out something from there. Well, it turned out that I thought, okay, now wait a minute here. You know you can fix most everything, so let's give that a shot first. Let's see if we can can salvage it, salvage it and fix it before we, you know, decide that there's nothing we can do. And so that's what I did. I I took literally on both pieces, I took the entire top, all of the, the napkin, from the napkin up, all of the embellishments, the napkin, everything, I took it all up. I took my razor, you know, my, this razor blade, and I took it and I scraped the entire top off of these things. That took me about a good hour and a half just to get the tops off of both of these pieces. And they were wooden pieces. Got those off, sanded them, re-decoupaged them, and re-embellished them with the exact same embellishments. And oh my goodness, they came out beautiful. And I've decided, going back to my original uh, pet peeve, I decided that I am not going to use triple thick anymore. I am no longer going to um, suggest that people use it. And I will give you guys some alternatives. Um, one of my favorite alternatives to triple thick is, um, uh, oh gosh. What is it called? I'll think of it. Um, it's another, it's another uh, product that's more almost like a super glue, but it dries with a real shiny hard finish and it protects the, the, the piece, but it doesn't yellow. Um, and so I really, really like it. And I'm gonna think of what it is. I have some, I have some in my, my stash. If I have to, I'll run and, and go find the, the bottle so that you guys can see what it is. The other thing is for me, my favorite thing to use now is to use UV resin because I can put that on my project. It looks like glass. I can also put glass glitter on top of it and it will um, cure into the resin and the resin dries. I can put it out in the sun and they say 15 minutes, but I leave it out for about an hour. And within that hour, it is completely cured, shiny, hard. I can work with it further. I can do whatever I need to do. And it's the most beautiful finish. Um, so resin, UV resin is my top choice. Not everybody can work with that because it can tend to, if you have uh, allergies, it can tend to bother you. So um, that's something that each person has to decide uh, for themselves. Um, but for me, that's my, my favorite uh, medium to use. Um, not going to suggest that anybody use Triple Thick anymore. I'm so sorry, and I know I've recommended it in other videos, and I've used it for years. Um, if it, now, it's fine if whatever you are using it on doesn't have a white background. Perfect. It works perfect for that and you're not going to see the discoloration or anything, but if it has a white background at all, don't use triple thick. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying it's not, it's not good. Um, I just don't suggest it because you will find that within um, a couple of weeks, your, your project is just not going to look good and you're not going to want to give it as a gift or sell it or whatever you planned on doing. So my suge suggestion is to not use it. Okay, so we've got the, the trim on there. Now I'm just going to, the rest of this is going to be really, really quick and easy. I'm going to put some flowers on here. This embellishment I got from Kiki's Sale. Is that not gorgeous? I just got a beautiful package from uh, Debbie with some stuff and I'm expecting a few more items but I got um, I got these 
uh, beautiful little white roses and this this one here is a pink and green it's like a very pale green oh my gosh it's so pretty um, and I I'll show you guys the other stuff that I got from her as well and I got these from Kiki's I'm gonna put this back on my hand so you can look at it again I got the the little white butterflies I got a couple of those and I got these and these are something that she has always carried however the ones that I got this time are um, they're acrylic so the the backing is not metal it's it's like acrylic so it's super lightweight but it looks exactly like the metal ones that she has carried for um, years so for me, this is perfect. It doesn't add so much weight to my projects, and I just love it. Um, so those are some of the things I'm going to be using on this. And then also, this is one of my little butterflies that I make using um, my little butterfly appliques, and I just added some um, extra bits and pieces, and I just love it. And it goes really, really nicely. Look at how perfect. And I already had this made. Look how perfect it goes with that, that rhinestone bling. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm hoping that there's enough space on here to add my butterfly. I, you know me, I'll probably make the space. So we'll be good to go. So I'm just going to start putting these on here. This is the easy part and the quick part. I'm just going to start adding these puppies on here. I want to make sure that I get that this piece of bling on there high enough that you can pretty much see almost the whole thing because I don't want to lose anything in this. This is so beautiful. I love purple. Purple is my favorite color. And I know that I've got in my next package that's coming from Debbie over at Kiki's, she is going to be sending me some purples and I think greens and a, green is another color I'm finding myself oddly drawn to lately. Um, it has not always been one of my favorite colors but right now I'm really enjoying finding um, bits and pieces with green in them. Um, and I'm really enjoying working with it. So that's kind of become one of my favorite colors, uh, especially like the sage greens, not the dark hunter green that doesn't thrill me, um, but the sage greens, oh my goodness, I just, I love them. So uh, let's see, I don't know if I'm gonna put more flowers. I wanna get my small flower box out here. <clears throat> because I want to see if there's any smaller flowers in here that I can kind of add in um, without them being too big. I don't think that's going to look good. No, that's blue. I just don't think I have much in the way. I know I don't have much in the way of purple. this one just I just want one or two little purple flowers that I can pop in there and accent it with okay so I think that one's gonna go right there because again I'm trying not to cover up I don't want to cover up this piece so I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna glue this down just going to add a nice amount of glue to the bottom of that and pop it in. And I can take that bit off. And that bit off.
And I've got this, this glue gun that I'm using is a low temp glue gun. So I, I'm not as apt to burn myself when I try to, um, to touch it. So I really like that <laughs> because I'm always forever touching my hot glue and burning myself. I'm just going to add a couple of these other purple flowers in a couple of spots just to kind of spread them out. And we're going to put this one here. Right there. Okay, and then I have a couple of these little acrylic white roses. And I've been using these little white roses for years now. Oopsie. And I really do love them. I was thinking I wanted to put a couple sort of back here. Let's see. How do I want to do this? I do want to put kind of a bow right back over here in this corner. That's why I kind of moved everything in that direction. So we're gonna we're gonna get a bow in there somehow. And I'm gonna put this over to this side here. I think this box is gonna be gorgeous. Like I said, I've had this box for years. And when I realized it had just been sitting there, not being enjoyed, um, I just, I had to do something with it. I wonder if this butterfly would be pretty kind of just back there. And it kind of gets lost if I put it back there by itself, but it does look pretty. Uh, let's see. Um, So I have this, <clears throat> this lace that actually came off of, um, it's a piece that I cut off of, oops, sorry I'm dropping things over here. It came off of this beautiful lace that I got from my friend Sherry, you guys have seen me use this in a project or two now, and it's one of my favorite 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 laces and so I tend to use more of the bottom section of this well I can't waste this top section because it does have the little the little polka dots and it's a very very pretty fine uh, lace so there isn't a piece of this that's gonna go to waste so I'm gonna make a bow with this and I think let's see I don't want it to be real big but I want it to go back in that little corner so I'm just gonna do like I usually do and I'm just kinda going back and forth with my loops and this is so thin that once I place a piece of um, a squeeze of glue on it it's going to be, it's going to go through all of the layers. So I'm just going to take it right here and then I'm going to kind of lift to the center section of my loops and I'm going to press. And again, my glue gun is a, is a low temp glue gun. So I did not burn my fingers doing that. So I'm going to take and I'm just going to snip it and snip it right there and then I'm going to take this other piece of it and that's what I'm going to tie around it to uh, to finish it off and this is going to make the most beautiful bow So let's see. Just 
just like that. And I'm going to have these extra two pieces kind of hanging down. Because I always like to have, you know, the at least four pieces of the, the tails hanging down off of my bows. I'm just going to snip it like that and like that. And that's too long. There we go. All right. So this piece, I just have to get this in here because I'm, I'm like, it's bugging me. <laughs> so I don't know. The only thing I don't know is, am I going to put it going that direction? I've got to separate these loops too. Just kind of fluff it out a little bit. I think my my tails do need to come sort of this way, but I'm going to take them kind of coming underneath the flowers, and then if I have to do any additional trimming or what have you, I'll do that after I get this down. And that looks super pretty. And I can fluff it out more in a minute after that glue dries. I can fluff it out a little bit more. I just don't want to mess with it too much right now. And then I'm going to place my butterfly somewhere right. Actually, I'm going to place one of those in the middle of it for sure. It could have either been that or a pearl, but I, I think I want this little flower. Put that there. And I had actually thought about using a key back here as well, but I feel like this key is just way too big. And I know I've got my other ones around here somewhere. I just am not sure. Oh, I do know where they are. Hang on, let me get those out. I think they're in this box. Nope. Here's one. I don't know if this one's going to be too big or not. It may be too big as well. It's almost the same size as that one. No. Oh well. I may add it on later on if I can find it. I do have some pretty, real pretty keys. Not in there either. Okay. Well, I tried. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this butterfly back here. And I want the butterfly kind of coming towards the flower. So I'm going to put it just right there. And I am going to use a tiny dot of E6000. And on the other side, I'm going to use my hot glue. Just like that. And I'm going to put it right there. Just like that. You know how sometimes when you put it on there, you don't get it in the right spot to where it's going to stick the way you want it to. So that's what I did. And now I'm going to fluff my bow a little bit more. Goodness gracious. The thing is, is once, I mean, the hot glue is great for the immediate, um, getting it to stick immediately, but once that E6000 dries, that butterfly's on there and it's not going anywhere. So, but right now, if I mess with it too much, because the E6000 is not cured, 
it will tend to move out of place. So just got to be careful. And I'm going to snip that just a little bit more because I don't want it to be all bow. Okay. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And then I have my other butterfly here. Oh, I've got these pearls. I do want to stick a couple of pearls in here in a couple of spots, but first I want to use a little piece of this pink pearl. I'm just going to cut it off in little small pieces. And do like I always do. I'm just going to find a spot in here and plop those in there. Squeeze those together and push them down. Best way to do that is to take your needle nose pliers and just get it in there. And then I'm going to put one of these white pearls on top of that. There we go. And that looks really pretty. And then we'll do another one. We'll just make this one a little bit longer and I'm gonna put this one kind of coming out off the other side here. Yeah, that's gonna look really pretty. Kind of get up under this other little flower down here. And pop those in there. unbelievable how much my hand dexterity has changed over the last couple of years. I used to be ultra coordinated. When I was a kid I used to do gymnastics, not professionally or anything. I wasn't, you know, Olympics gymnast, but I loved gymnastics and so I I could do, you know, the the back flips and the handsprings and you know all the, the cool stuff and it was kind of one of my favorite things um, to do and we had a lady that lived around the corner from us when I was a kid and she taught uh, ballet and gymnastics and her daughter was actually a um, professional gymnast and oh I used to go my we didn't have a lot of money so I used to go and I would just watch, she would do the classes out of her garage. And that's kind of the way people did things back then. You know, you didn't have to have a fancy studio to, you know, teach classes in, in things like that. So, you know, people did it out of their garage and it was completely okay. It was fine. These days, if you're not in a posh studio, it, it must not be a good class because you didn't pay an arm and a leg, which is so not true. You probably get better better teaching from someone who's doing it out of their garage than you're going to get from that person with the posh studio in more in more instances because the person doing it out of their garage is doing it because they love doing it and um, that's the way I see it anyway. And so for me Oh, I used to just love watch going down there and watching them practice. And I so badly wanted to take lessons from her. And actually, the, her daughter was the same age as me, and, but we didn't know each other. We, we lived on two different streets. And what I would do is I would walk. When I found out she was teaching student, uh, uh, classes out of her garage, I would just walk. That was back in the days when a kid could just go somewhere and didn't have to worry about getting kidnapped and things like that. And I would just walk around there over onto their street and watch. Um, 
But anyway, I got to know her later on. Um, she, she had gone to a private school and I went to public school and that's kind of why we didn't really know each other. And later on, she started going to public school and started going to the school that I went to. And I got to know her. And um, so it was really cool for me. I, I, you know, this hear this lady that I had watched for years teaching her students. Um, you know, I got to meet her daughter and it was just awesome for me. I thought it was very cool. And I don't know where I was going with this whole thing as far as the gymnastics. Oh, dexterity in my hands. <laughs> it's funny how I can just go off on a tangent like that. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this butterfly is going to go right up here in the front and center because I really love this butterfly. And this jewelry box is going to be gorgeous. I think you guys are going to agree with me on that one. I do want to place one more pearl over here with this one because I see a little hole right there and I don't want to have that extra hole sitting there with nothing, nothing to pretty it up. Okay, didn't need that flower, didn't need that one. And we are fini. And I know that this box is completely covered on the top, but you know what? There is one more thing I want to do. I'm sorry, you guys, I just realized I was planning on putting a piece in the front where this front flower is. And I'm just not sure, though, if I have something that is small enough to put there because that flower already kind of sticks out. I, what I really need is I need something that is flat. And I don't have anything flat that I can put in there. But this piece actually will work because it's small. I, don't, I just don't want anything big and bulky. And I think I can flatten it out just a little bit enough that it, it won't protrude so much. Yep. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a little E6000 again. On the edges. And I'm going to put hot glue in the center. Pop that little guy in there. And it just kind of looks like the center of that flower. This little piece that's inside this flower would have been perfect to go in there, but it's already been used, so. <laughs> ah, darn it. All right, I'm gonna pop one more dot of hot glue on there. Give this one more shot. And just let me hold it down for just a minute. not wanting to hold on long enough to, here, let me take the lid off for a second. Yeah, I should have done that in the first place.
Okay, now it's sticking in there. Okay, you guys, I am done. Feeny. And actually, this was not too bad. There we go. Let me pop my other light on and maybe you can see it even better that way. And put it against my nice dark background. So that's the piece completed, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed doing this one for you. And I think that this box turned out phenomenal, actually. Look at that. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. And it's beautiful all the way around. We've got the other little butterfly back here. And actually that was pretty much the perfect spot for it. So there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button down below and uh, become a subscriber. I'm gonna be putting out a whole lot of new material um, here. I'm working very, very hard to put out some good videos and some great content, and I'm hoping you guys are really enjoying it. Um, and for those of you who are already subscribed to my channel, thank you so much, and thank you for your um, continued uh, support. Thank you to everybody who has been supporting my channel, sending me packages of um, supplies. I so appreciate it. And, you know, I, I've, I've gotten a few donations to my channel. I appreciate those more than you will ever know. And for supporting my Etsy shop. Um, I'm working very hard to try and make this maybe my career if I can. Uh, right now, it's not quite enough to make a career out of and make a living from, but um, my biggest goal would be to make that happen, and I'm working extremely hard to, um, to give that a go and see what I can do to make this my, my, um, my career. So, um, if that's possible, um, you know, the good Lord knows what his plan is for me and hopefully he can add that into my, my plan here. Um, if not, that's okay too. Then I just know that I have to get back to doing some other stuff to make ends meet. But, um, anyway, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks so much. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of this one. And also if you have any um, ideas for things that um, you would like to see, um, one of my biggest goals right now is to get my little spool doll done um, for uh, Josefina because I know that's an important one for her. She sent me a beautiful package of wonderful supplies and I want to fulfill that for her, so hopefully that'll get done soon. I do have several items on my list that, um, that I've actually had on my list for months uh, to complete as well. And I haven't forgotten any, any of you who've made suggestions. There's just so many things on that list. It's insane. Um, but that's okay. I love having a long list because it keeps me busy and it keeps me focused and keeps me going. So thank you so much, everybody. You have a really wonderful and blessed day, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. God bless.